Hello. Right, I pull my laptop right up. Can't get any closer to my mic. So I hope you can all hear me. Um I think get my new mic by Friday, Saturday. So hopefully everything will run smoother. Um as I said, it, as it says in the title, just the best, let's talk Sebastian and the searches. Right. But before that, how's everyone doing? If you're watching on replay, all the links that I mentioned in here, in the live, will be in the description. Um, what else? Oh yes, I just want to pull this up because I'm done. Bear with me. No, 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 no. Okay, keep giving on me. Right. Some up speaking. Oh gosh, I get that up there. What the feck? Right. Come on. Think now, everything just went on me, so I don't know what happened. Right, oh. all I had was a beep, 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 and then my screen went black. So, Right, as you can see, I've got the uh, petition up. Now, this petition, I'll read what it says. It says, we want the FBI to take over the investigation of the case of missing Sebastian Wayne Drake Rogers from Sumner County Sheriff's Office. It's been, well, this was when it was 50 days. So it's been up a few days, a couple of days now. Has been 50 days since Sebastian has gone missing. No scent trail from dogs. No video footage of Sebastian leaving his mother's house. No criminal investigation at all or some and the sheriff's house. Right? Now, uh, we, don't, we don't know what's happening. There could be an investigation. They say there's an investigation going on. But because law enforcement and TBI will not confirm or deny anything with Seth, he doesn't know what's going on. He doesn't even know there is an investigation going on. They could just be saying that. So. So I can understand him wanting the FBI, but then the FBI are telling him they have to wait 60 days from the start of the, from when Sebastian first went missing onwards. I'm sorry, that's not good enough. 
You know what I mean? Apparently, CP knows everything. Why? When he went on that phone call with that uh, diver from Raft Divers, and he had that phone call, he's making out that I'm the guy to come to, I'm the one with all the information. He's pushing himself into the investigation. That, to me, is a big red flag. Right? You don't see Seth pushing himself into the investigation. So, but CP knows everything because apparently law enforcement phone them daily and keep them up to date with what's going on. But poor Seth, and now they're just sitting in a five-wheeler going about their everyday business. But poor Seth, who's on the brink of exhaustion, exhaustion, whatever, right? He has been out there pounding the streets from day one. He's had to stand off from the search a bit because of the injury to his shoulder. But let's get out there handing out flyers. He's still getting them flyers out there. Right? Now, I saw someone, and I respect this YouTuber. Right? Hold on. However, I didn't like what was put about how she approached him. Right? And he, he said he would donate to... The billboards, right? Fair enough. He did donate to the billboards. Then she asked if he'd be willing to donate again or on a regular basis or something like that. And he turned around and said no because he's doing his own billboards, which is T-shirts. People all over the USA have ordered these T-shirts, right? with Sebastian's face on it. So this is not just getting around Tennessee or Mississippi. This is nationwide. And I'm so tempted to buy one myself. But I live in the UK and I must admit, if I brought one, people would just go, well, they'd ask me about the kite, about it. Like, I always get people asking me what, when I've got certain tops on. Right, with logos on, right? So, and I'd say I was a lad, an autistic lad who went missing in ten Tennessee. And I'd go, oh, you were sad. And, boom, I'd lose them. I would lose them. Because to them, because it's not in the UK, it's not that urgent. It's not important. Now, in my eyes, it's important. It doesn't matter where you live. Right? But there are a lot of you, uh, people on YouTube from the UK who are supporting this case. Who, does, who do want to see justice come. Who do want to see Sebastian come home to his dad. But there's a hell of a lot who, don't, who wouldn't even be interested as soon as I open my mouth to them. They wouldn't be interested. I see it in their eyes. I've spoke to certain people before and you see it in their eyes going, oh God. Oh, God. You know what I mean? They just don't care. And I think they'd have the same attitude if it was a child in the UK, because that's what people in the UK are like, a lot of them. They don't care. As long as it doesn't affect them, that's how they look with. But one day it might affect them. One day I might have a child that goes missing. Right? Anyway, go off the. Stop babbling on about that. So he said no, and she took offence at She sort of like took offence at it. And she's going on about how much money is raised on the uh, GoFundMe and how much is getting through the um, Cash App. 
But all that money he's getting through Cash App or GoFundMe is going towards his general bills, his rent, his electric, his water, all that lot. Right? And anything else that comes with owning a house. Uh, because they've all got to be paid still. These bills still got to be paid and he's not working. He's took an absence of leave while his son is missing. And any other money he gets is going towards getting T-shirts made and all that lot. He's not getting that much. Okay, he might have so much thousands in the um, GoFundMe. But we don't know how much longer this search is going to go on. We don't know how much longer he's going to be out of work looking for his son. This is why this petition now is to get the FBI in. Because Seth has said they, they've made some big bloomers. Big bloomers, law enforcement. They didn't do any, what can you call it? Um, oh, God. A forensic investigation on the house. Now, I'm sorry, if I was a police officer and, and I've gone through the house and I've got all that information that they gave me and then I've got the information from the dog handlers, right, that there was no scent. Once they left the house, there was no scent of him apart from one dog that picked up his scent. Right, and lost it at the um, retention pond over on the building site. Now, as I said, he could have done that route days earlier. You don't know how often his mum may be putting him outside to calm down. And he's walked off. Right? To calm down. He's walked off and thought, I'll go over by the uh, construction site. They've got diggers over there. They've got this over there. They said he likes diggers and big machinery. So that could have been days before that that scent was left there. Right? Now, if that dog had picked up a scent and led them to somewhere else, I've done okay. This is not a place this child would normally go. Right, let's say, led him to that forest across the, as you come out of there, where they live. They've got that wooded area. What if the dog has gone, led them to there, right into that forest area? Then the mother will be going, well, he don't go there. Why would the scent be there? And then I could say, okay, the dog picked up on a scent. At a place where Sebastian does not normally go, has not been known to go. He was known to walk around that estate, that other estate, or that other complex, housing complex. Neighbor, a neighbor, uh, someone who lived on that complex said they had seen him walking around there before, just not on the Monday. So he's been known to go over there before. It's a 15-year-old lad. He's curious. He's got no friends, so he's going to go up somewhere, isn't he? He's going to walk around. Right? So, I don't take too much into that dog scent because it could have been a few days before or even a day before. But for no other dogs to pick up, and yet he said there was other dogs, there was one dog in that dispatch call. It was one dog right and then they said that they drained that retention pond why would you need to drain a retention pond if it's only knee deep high and you can walk through it why would you need to drain it you'd be able to feel it you know what i mean you'd be able to feel and see whatever was in there. But, you know, they apparently drained one of the retention ponds. 
right? And then the search continues for only about a few days. On the eighth day or something like that, they scaled back the search and looked was looking at the investigate investigator side of it. Now I'm sorry, big mistake again. They should have been investigating it as well as searching from day one. From day one. Sorry, just drinking some more coffee. Mm -hmm. They should have been investigating it and searching from day one. Right? So, when they scaled it back just to do the investigation side, we've now been there, what? How many weeks has it been now? Uh, six weeks. Shush up. Oi, oi. Sorry about that, my cat's in the background moaning as usual. Shush. Oh, laying off a moaner. Anyway, so, but we heard nothing off then. Nothing. Not a peep. Right? And then they did some press releases. And I'm going to sort that press release out because that was very telling. Right? I'll sort it out. Oh, sure, sure. Right, um... I found. Uh, right, uh, I'm just trying to find it here. A uh, press release. First. No, no. Latest. I swear to God, my cat is going to go. I have a, me and my cat are going to have a come to Jesus meeting very soon. If it doesn't be quiet. Right. Right. Uh, so is it? Where is that first? That light is supposed to be. Right. I think if I've got it on my Facebook page, I'll have a look in here. Alright. Oi! Shush! Be quiet! Hold on a minute. My cat's into something and I'm about to have a come to Jesus. Meeting with you. Happy in no more minions all out the tongue. It's quite hard to tell which one is which when you're telling them off because they're both brothers, brothers, and they look so they're like identical. Oh, God, you look on my hold on, hold on. I'm just gonna put you on mute so you can't hear me have a come to Jesus meeting with them. Hold on, I'm just gonna have a come to Jesus meeting with them. I'm telling the one cat off and the other cat is looking at me to say, what are you doing? Give me the, the evil eye. Anyway, I'm back. Hopefully he's learned. Um, so, 
as I said, I don't take too much. But then they go into this investigation, and then literally, was it next day or the day after they went on to a search at a landfill in Kentucky? Because apparently, they were telling everyone that the refuge men were had told them that when they moved the beam on the Monday morning to hook it onto their mechanical arms, they don't lift the bin, they just roll it towards these mechanical arms and these mechanical arms pick it up. Right? They said that their bin felt slightly heavier than usual. Well, the Kentucky landfill has got nothing to do with the general waste. Right? The Kentucky landfill is where, do you know on the construction site, you've got them big skips where they put all the metal and rubbish and everything in, yeah? That is where they take the big skips to the Kentucky one. The everyday waste, general waste, is taken to another one, more local. But as far as we know, that one has not been searched. Now, I'm sure if there's a search going on there, you, um, some news channel will get picked up on it. Right? Because they always do. This new channel always pick up on something. So, but nothing's being said about that one. So we don't know if there's been a search at that landfill. It's not too late. Well, it is too late, but not too late, if you know what I mean. Because if... I don't know if... if uh, people used... There was a rumour going around that at school, he would say to his friends, put me in the trash bin. Put me in the trash bin. He wanted them to put him in the trash bin. Now, is that because his mum would put him in the trash bin at home as a punishment? Who knows? We don't know. Right? But all we do know is that we... All we do know is that we don't know is they have... Whether or not they've searched that landfill where the general household waste is took taken to. So, there's one big red flag there. I'd like to know if they have, and if not, why haven't they? Right? <coughs> well, there's been a few things come out. Let's have a look at my Facebook. Right? And I'm going to my emails, isn't it? Well, what I'm going to do, I'm going to show this first. Because this is two weeks ago. This is very telling, this interview. Right? This interview is from two weeks ago, and it's, it's very telling. Some people say, well, they didn't tell us anything, did they? They didn't tell us anything new. Right, I'll go. I just lost my mouse. Maybe that's gone. Maybe it's... Well, they didn't tell us anything new. It's not what they didn't tell us. You've got to read between the lines, if you know what I mean. Read between the lines. It's not what they didn't tell us. It's what they said, but what they didn't tell us. Sort of thing. So we're going to listen to this. It's 5 minutes 55 seconds. But I will stop it when I think we need to. Okay. 
You guys ready? All right. Good morning. I'm Eric Craddock with Summer County Sheriff's Office, and we're going to come to you today with. I'm sorry, it's not very loud. I'm trying to work on it to see if I can get the volume up. But for some reason, it's, it's good. I don't know if my mouse just playing up. You know, that's as high as it's going to go. Yep, yeah, that's as high as it's going to go there. And volume, it's as high as it's going to go there. So I can't get it any, any higher. But what I would say, if you've got if pieces or headphones use your headphones because it'll come through a lot louder this is an update on the sebastian rogers case sebastian has been missing since late february Um, as I said before, the investigation remains ongoing. The entire community is deeply saddened by what is what has occurred. We're all extremely concerned for Sebastian's welfare. I want to encourage the community to stay vigilant, to report anything that they think may be of some significance to the investigation, no matter how minute it may appear to be to you. Please call 1-800-TBI-FIND with any tips or the Sumner County Emergency Communications Center at 615-451. 3838. We understand the anxiety and the concern that this case has caused in the community. We too share the anxiety and concern for Sebastian. I want to reiterate that we are doing everything we can to find Sebastian and bring him home. Despite the passage of time, the Obviously not everything, not quite everything. Why is Sebastian's picture and information not on your missing person's webpage, website? TBI's got him on there, but you haven't. Commitment to finding Sebastian remains unwavering. I said this when we scaled the search back. Our commitment to finding Sebastian remains. We will continue to investigate every possible lead that comes in. The Summer County Sheriff's Office wants to express our gratitude to the community and the many individuals who have helped in the search, the many individuals who have called in tips, the many individuals who have printed flyers and kept Sebastian's face in the news. Nothing would be, uh, nothing would make me happier than to wake up tomorrow morning with a tip that cracks this case wide open. He just said it there. Nothing would make me happier than for me to wake up tomorrow morning with a tip that would crack this case wide open. What he is saying is, we've got feck all. We're waiting on that one tip. We've got feck all. And we find Sebastian and bring him home. Uh, at this time, I'll turn it over to Susan Allen from the TV. She's more interesting. What she said. Hi, good morning. Thanks for being here. Um, we wanted to, we know how invested everybody is in the search for Sebastian, in finding out what happened to him and bringing him home. And we want to let everybody know he has not been forgotten. Nobody's forgotten about him. Nobody has given up looking for him. Uh, at the beginning of this investigation, there was a large uh, land search for him. Um, it was very visible. There were also waterways, lakes, ponds that were searched. Um, there were aerial searches with helicopters and drones and fixed wing planes. They were done at night. They were done on weekends. They were done during the day. Um, that was very visible and it was something everybody was able to see. But we want to let you know that even though there is not that high visibility in investigating this case, that we are not done. This is, it's gone back to what could be considered good old fashioned police work. Um, interviewing individuals, re-interviewing individuals, checking out leads, rechecking leads. Um, we have been working with other law enforcement agencies who have had in other jurisdictions who have perhaps had some complex cases of their own that they've worked on to uh, get tips from them. We have um, had, you know, this day of, of technology with everyone, ha everyone having cell phones and doorbells and ring bells and surveillance cameras. Um, 
that, as you can imagine, has been a bit of a chore to be able to collect all those and then review them. Excuse me? A bit of a chore? That's your job? That's your job? It's not a chore. Chore. A chore is ironing, washing, cleaning, shopping, grocery shopping, I should say. Um, all those little things. That's a chore. Looking through ring bell, door, ring bell footage and home security footage is not a chore. It's your job. It's, it's important so we know what's out there. Um, we have been reviewing that, re reviewing it again. Um, um, we have had Hi, uh, Samantha. agencies involved. The FBI has been helpful in that. Um, Secret Service has also been helpful in that. Um, so we are just trying to do whatever we can to keep, keep advance the, the uh, investigation. It has not gone where anybody has forgotten about him or is not pursuing this. My internet keeps fluctuating up and down. So if I lose you, just stay there, I'll be straight back. If I get kicked off, I'll be straight back. The parents have been cooperative throughout at the beginning of the investigation. Did you hear what you, she said? The parents had been cooperative throughout the, uh, throughout the investigation. Or what was it again? Hold on. We'll go back just a second. Oh, I've probably gone back too far. Helpful in that. Um, Secret Service has also been helpful in that. Um, so we are just trying to do whatever we can to keep advance the, the uh, investigation. It has not gone to a place where anybody has forgotten about him or is not pursuing this. The parents have been cooperative throughout at the beginning of the investigation. Throughout, at the beginning. So are they not cooperative no more? Are they not helping you no more? Um, they have pretty much done whatever law enforcement has asked of them. Pretty much done everything law enforcement has asked them to do. Hmm. What have you asked them to do? What haven't they done? Um, at this point, we don't have any evidence. There is not any kind of an indication that there is a criminal element involved. Um, but we are keeping options open. We don't. Hold on. You've got no evidence to say there's a criminal invest criminal investigation involved. Criminal involved. Right. Did you do a forensic search of the house? Did you? No. That's why you've got no evidence, because she didn't do that. If, like I said when I first started this, I said that if I was a police officer and I sat there and listened to everything that had been said by the mother and then by hearing from the dog handlers that there was no scent apart from one, no scent of Sebastian anywhere around that house. I'd be going, okay. So this child got up in the middle of the night, walked out, no shoes on, no coat, no phone, no money, nothing, no snacks, no drinks, but just got up and walked out of the house and left no scent was seen on no camera, anywhere. That's a big red flag to me. And I'm not in law enforcement, but it's a big red flag to me. We don't know what has happened. We don't know where Sebastian is right now. So we are. You don't know what happened because you didn't do a forensic investigation on the house. Pursuing any and all avenues. Um, we do want to caution some, uh, there are some media, social media elements out there who purport to have information that is 
direct from the in investigation. Um, I just want to reiterate that that is not the case. Um, the Some of the information that is being provided on some of the social media channels is inaccurate and Sorry, my internet is. I don't know if we've got some strong winds out there. I haven't looked at my windows today. <laughs> I really haven't. I've just got up today and. Distraction because a lot of what has been out there in some of the social media trek channels has been rumors and speculations and theories and some of. No, tell her all. I did go out today and it was quite warm. Wasn't windy, but that was this afternoon. It's my picked up that has been advanced and people have caught a hold of it as if it's what's really happening um that has resulted in well i can tell you love i've seen bits of that the rest of that video and i know where that video came from i know what house it came from right and what i see are cars parked on a driveway and further over, up in the right hand corner, is two little lights. And just beyond that is um, two other lights. Like, to me, it looks like um, where you set off a light on a house when you walk past getting a light to come on, security lights. To me, it looks like security lights. But then you've got these two little lights. One walking towards the other. I do not see any garbage truck there that you got uh, Seth to tell YouTube it was. I don't see no garbage truck. I see cars parked on a driveway and then over above past that you see these two little torch lights and you see the lights on the heads. So don't try fobbing us up with a garbage truck. Us getting information that is either, you know, like I said, distracting. It's uh, taking away time and effort from what the agencies agencies need to be doing as far as looking for Sebastian. Um, we have right. If it was a garbage truck, love, why won't you show us the video, the full video, right? And why did they say? It's of no importance, but might be in the future. I've had so far, uh, as of this morning, 314 tips that have come in through the tip line. It's been mentioned, but I'll say it again. It's 1-800. 314 tips. That is not a lot. That is not a lot. When you think of Elijah Vu and what the uh, detective said, the sheriff or whatever said there, they've had thousands of tips come through. Thousands. You've had 314 tips. Hmm. TBI find. We are also taking tips through email, which is tips, uh, I'm sorry, tips to TBI, T-O, TBI, at tbi.tn.gov. Um, what's next? We want people, as Chief Deputy said, to continue to remain vigilant, get uh, vi vigilant, um, get Sa Sebastian's picture out there, continue to share his picture, his information. Well, can you have a word with law enforcement then to have uh, Sebastian's picture and details put on their missing pa children's page? Can you? Thank you. We'd really appreciate that. Um, now that it's getting to be nicer, well, not not today with the weather, but now that the weather has turned warmer, people it may be more um, inclined to be in their yards. If you go out and see anything that looks <laughs> different, let us know. Something where perhaps a... Oh, okay. Okay, everyone. Sebastian is out there playing a good game of flipping hide and seek. He's not going to be in anyone's yard, anyone's sheds, anyone's cars you know what i mean they've looked the community is searched everywhere so unless he's playing a flipping good game of hide and seek then he's nowhere a teenager could have hidden um if you have 
a large amount of property in the area or something that has any kind of holes or unstable footing or ledges where, again, where a teen could have gone to hide or to play. Um, and you don't feel comfortable checking it out, let us know. We'll get somebody from law enforcement to go out there with you. Uh, hold on. Did they not show us, um, uh, Nick Ferris, show us their map of where they'd searched? Right? And it's a big area they've covered. A hell of a big area. So why are you still asking people if they've got property with uh cliffs uh drops uh drops down in cliffs and whatever wouldn't you search that already hmm? or to uh check it out themselves um we just want to make sure that every stone is unturned that there's no well, you don't turn every stone over have you on the left unturned that we want people to make sure that we are looking everywhere we can we do want to continue to get the tips but please make it don't don't provide information that you might have seen through social media channels um, if you have information about sebastian about conversations you might have had with him things he liked right tell us anyway when Seb uh, seth texted you the other week or a few nights ago Asking you, you, the TBR, if you had the clothing that Sebastian was wearing on the Sunday night when he left that steakhouse. Why did you get all snotty with him? Right? He's asking a legitimate question. The only reason I can think that TBI got all fussy with him was because Oh my God, we didn't ask about that. Did you collect them clothing? No, we haven't collected no clothing. Hmm? You got found out there. You didn't collect the clothing he was wearing on the Sunday night. And can the mother now give you those clothing? Yes, she may have washed them. And yes, she may have folded them and put them away. But can she give you those items? Can she? Because if not, where are they? Likes to do places he liked to go. Any people he may have mentioned that are in his life, um, that could be helpful in finding out maybe what he was interested in. Finally, uh, we want to thank the community. We want to thank the media. You guys have been really good about keeping his name. We have, haven't we? Us YouTubers have been really good getting his name out there. Thank you for not mentioning net social network sites. In the public's eye. Um, that's really important. Um, and thank you for your diligence in providing that information out there. And as Chief Deputy said, we also want to thank the community. Um, from the very first day, everybody has really been all in as far as whatever they can do to help in the service. Right. Oh, I can't listen to her no more. Sorry. I can't. I can't listen to her. Because she gave us a few pointers, like those very cooperative at the beginning, right? And things like that, yeah? But as for looking at every tip that comes in, you've only had 314 tips, that was two, two weeks ago. That isn't a lot of tips to look at, right? And um, compared to some cases. And that is why Seth has given up giving you tips. He was getting tips daily. He was reporting those tips to you. But you wasn't getting back to Seth about that, was you? No. No, he wasn't getting back to Seth. So now Seth doesn't give you any tips. If he gets any, he acts on it on his own. He gets his people together, they go searching. Or they go handing out flyers. Because a lot, that's a lot more than what you lot are doing at the moment. Every so often you might do, oh, we'll do a two-day search. 
like you did after this press interview the next day. You did a two day search where you had exusers come back in. But you only wanted them there for the drones. You don't want any outsiders really doing the searches. You only want law enforcement and people who work for, I don't know, fire brigade and all that lot. You only want those people doing the searches. Why wouldn't you let Exu Search get their search teams out there? Right? Why don't, like, I remember Seth saying at the beginning, he used to let the police know, law enforcement know, every day where he was searching, so that if anything happens, they know where to go to find him. He's not even telling you no more, is he? Because he's not searching anywhere near where you where you've searched. However, right? Get off that woman. I can't really tell. <laughs> I can't stand that woman. Right? Um, all right. Now, first of all, I want to go into my emails because Um, some information has come up. A bit uh, dumbfounding, if you know what I mean. Well, this one, right, first of all, I'm going to this one. I think someone is someone is getting annoyed here. This is CP messaging, put a message out there for CJ. Now CJ has his own YouTube channel. And he goes out there, boots on the ground, you know what I mean. He's been out there several times now. He's been out there with not divers. Um some ever dive to him, I can't remember the name. And he's been out there himself on searches. Right? But this is what CJ's put. This was like a while ago now. I don't know if it was yesterday or what. But CJ. No, CJ dot dot dot. This is from Christopher CP. It's come to my attention. That you have plans to visit my house tomorrow. Take this as an official notification. There are no trespassing signs posted all around the house. Hmm. If you set foot on the property. Oh, I can't. Oh, I can't. Oh, I can't. Oh, I can't. There. Take this as an official notification. There are no trespassing signs posted all around the house. If you set foot on the property at all, for any reason, you will be prosecuted. Well, I can understand that. What? There are no easements around the property in our subdivision. What are easements? Can someone tell me that? This is not a threat, just a statement. Please respect our privacy as well as our wishes. Thank you in advance, sir. Now I know CJ, and I know a lot of other YouTubers that have been out there. Right? I'm not going to go on your property, sir. They're not. Like, you can't stop them driving past. You can't even stop them sitting outside your house. You can probably phone law enforcement to come and get them to move on. But you can't really stop them from sitting in their car outside your house. It's a public right of way, I believe. I don't know what the laws are in the, U in the USA. I know if it happened in the UK and say someone sat outside my house, right? I would phone the police and they would just come and say, look, we've had a complaint, you need to move on. Right? And they'd move them on. But I just think this was just Ridiculous. Right? Just ridiculous. 
Because no. No YouTube is going to go on anyone's property. They know better than that. Right? First I remember, was it Bullhorn Betty? When she was at 210 Ben Hill Road with some other, some other people, two or three other people. And they came down that road to her, taunting her to come on the property, and she wouldn't go on the property. She wouldn't go up on the driveway because she knew the laws. She knows private property, it's your property, not hers. No one is allowed on it unless you say so. Right? So I thought that was a bit stupid. And then we have, hang on. Right, this one. What is this one? Right, I haven't got the other part to which I'm actually to account. I'll pull that up then. The Uvalde Foundation. They put out a statement or a Twitter or whatever. Right? Stating. We are now 100% convinced that the family of hashtag Sebastian Rogers knows far, far more than they have been than has been revealed publicly. We're also now equally convinced that recent developments indicate answers to be revealed soon. And people just go, thank you. Someone else is seeing it now. You know what I mean? It's not just just people on YouTube and on Twitter and Facebook and TikTok and Instagram. If there's a foundation that is seeing it, right? Let's close that again, don't you? Know. Definitely don't need to see her again. Back to position. Right, I'm going to go into my X account. information is now this is quite a big turnaround I think right we've got that one there oh, no, I'm gonna share it. this is from April the 16th where which I've just read out we are now a hundred percent convinced that the family of Sebastian Rogers knows far more than has been revealed publicly right but then, hold on. I reposted this. So I, I reposted this fourteen hours ago. So I don't know when this was posted. I can't remember. It says today our foundation had literally hundreds of messages and emails in regard to Sebastian Rogers and our our efforts. Our efforts continue and our stance remains at this juncture to avoid avoid jeopardizing the, the progressing investigation we cannot elaborate further answers are forthcoming what do they mean by that has a law enforcement got onto us after that last after that first one saying how they were 100% certain that the parents of Sebastian Rogers know more than they are saying. And have law enforcement told them to back off. Right? Because from what I can make out from this, they don't do searches, they just hand leaflets out and they go to schools and things like that. I don't know. I couldn't really find much out about them. I will look though because I've got my intuition going out. I'm thinking, hmm, who is this Uvaid? foundation i think there was from a, a state 
one of the other stage where something happened? Right? I'm not sure. But I'm going to look into them. Because I just think that one here, today our foundation had literally hundreds of messages. Well, of course you're going to have hundreds of messages. It's best. Mm. Especially when you put, we are now 100% convinced that the family of Sebastian Rogers knows far more than has been revealed publicly. Right? So, yeah. You don't get other emails from people saying, well, what do you mean by that? And things like that. But now, at this juncture, to avoid jeopardizing their progressing investigation, we cannot elaborate further. Hmm. I think law enforcement enforcement has got to them. I really do. Shut them down. So, if you hear anything else, I'll keep you informed. But it's just a bit of a turnaround that they say that and then all of a sudden they can't say anything else because they're jeopardising the investigation. Well, this investigation has going, been going on, what, six weeks now? Six, seven weeks? In another seven, eight days, it's, it's been going on for seven weeks. So, what is happening to take them so long to six weeks? Yes, I've heard people say, bring up other cases, right? Where those two boys that went missing, or um, and some at West who went missing, who's never been found. Took them two years to arrest the parents. The, the adopted parents. Two years. As a re uh, family member, I'd be fuming it was taking that long to charge anyone. Right? So, it can take a while. But I think what's getting to Seth is the fact that they're not keeping him updated. But apparently they're keeping KP and CP updated. And they're not even in their own home. He's down in Mississippi working and she's down there with him. Now I just thought about something today. <coughs> <coughs> Pardon me. Right, um... I wonder if the reason she's going down there to Mississippi to live in a five-wheeler when I've got a lovely three bedrooms, possible four bedrooms, if you count the room above the garage, yeah, house. Why would you go and live in a, a five-wheeler? Could it be because he doesn't trust her? Because of that rumour that went about about her having, having an affair with one of the neighbours? So. Or. Easy. So. <coughs> <coughs> if law enforcement want to speak to her. He can be there as well. <coughs> I'm so sorry. <coughs> My throat is really dry. So, <coughs> in my opinion, it's a couple of things. It's to keep her on that <coughs> so that she can't say anything without him being there. Or, 
to stop her from seeing her so-called boyfriend. I don't know. I don't know, too, that he's about her having an affair with someone. I don't know. That's why I've never really mentioned it before. Because I don't know. Right? But if there is someone else involved, I hope this is told law enforcement who it is. <coughs> I'm so sorry. Hold on. Hold on. Hold on. So sorry about that. This cold is not getting any better. God. So, there's a couple of reasons why she's down. She says it's because she was getting threats. Now, I'm sure she could, have, if that was the case, she could have told law enforcement and they would have done uh, drive around. You know what I mean? Drive past. Or even have someone sit outside her house. You know what I mean? But I can assure you the threats are not coming from YouTubers. YouTubers know the law. They know not to trespass. They know not to threaten. Right, so if anyone's trespassing or anyone is threatening, it's not YouTubers. And I can't, I don't condone that sort of behaviour. I don't. Because at the end of the day, we are here for one reason. And we are all here for that one reason. All these YouTubers, TikTokers, Twitters, you name it, we are here for one reason. And that is, I don't, I'm going to pull him up. This lad, Sebastian Wayne Drake Rogers. So, now, someone said this photo was taken the Saturday before he went missing. How about that? They said this is an old picture of him. This was when he was slightly younger. And as someone said, why have they not used one of the, the older pictures of him? I haven't got any of them. I think it's got any of them. No, I haven't. Right? I haven't got any of the older pictures on here. They're in my folders. Right? But I heard that apparently they didn't have take many photos of him. As he got a bit older, because he always got goofy in him, right? Now I think she's meaning like his teeth, because remember that video that came out where he got a green beaker and some, I should imagine, iced tea in a, a jug, and he's got green tea, and she turned around and said, "Oh, you are goofy. Did you see his smile?" Come off his face. Because I thought, I think it was because of that. Not because it's a, a loving thing to say, because I was goofing around. You know what I mean? Being silly. You know what I mean? I think it was a name she called him because of his teeth. Were you goofy? And that interview she did the other day, where was it? I'm not going to show it again. I'm not. Because she just gets me so mad as well. I think everyone in this case, involved in this case, is getting me so mad. I just feel so sorry for Seth. Because he's working himself into a grave. All he wants is information on his son. And he's not getting... 
thickly swathed of anyone. However, where is it going up here? Right? No, God's sake, what is it picking up? I know, I'm just going to pause this before we start it. I remember Seth saying a while ago that he had investigators on this case. And that was where he's getting all these tips from. Right? Perhaps got to the point where, look, they're not giving me any more information. They're not, you know what I mean? I'm just going to stop it. Because PRs are not, ex are not cheap. They're expensive. Some go by the hour, some go by the day. Right? They're not cheap. So, <coughs> it's now come out that he's got two, two PIs on this case. And uh, we're going to listen to the news report about this. There is new information tonight in the months-long search for missing 15-year-old Sebastian Rogers. The Sumner County teen was last seen at his Hendersonville home at the end of February. He's been missing ever since. News 2's My Owens is at the WKRN.com alert desk with these new details. My. Well, Bob Haley, we have confirmed Sebastian Rogers' biological father has now hired two private investigators to look into his son's disappearance. Now, that's according to the Sumner County Sheriff's Office. The sheriff told us he briefly met with the investigators this afternoon. They are reportedly interested in researching some of the areas around Sebastian's home. In the days immediately after Sebastian went missing, search crews covered miles and miles of land but repeated searches didn't turn up any new leads. The search took investigators as far as a landfill in southern Kentucky where the trash in Sebastian's neighborhood reportedly goes after it's picked up. That search also turned up nothing. No, it doesn't. It does not go there. That is a landfill for those big skips on the construction site. For the rocks, the boulders, the metal pieces, the you name it, that is put in the skip. That is what goes to this landfill. That is getting me so annoyed when I keep hearing people say this. And then news reporters that are saying it, they should know what landfill general household group. If they did their background, their research, they'd know. I only clicked on Kentucky Landfill and it told me everything I needed to know about that landfill. And it didn't include anything to do with general household waste. So start doing your research, please. I think now Sebastian's father, Seth, has launched searches himself going as far as is West Tennessee. He told us today he's doing everything he can to find his son. Haley. There is new information to Right. So why aren't these news reporters doing their research? Honestly. There's one he done at the near the beginning. And she put so much and you know, right up, you ready, and it say the mother was a nurse, the father was into this, the stepfather did this. I'm thinking, there's two false reports there. You haven't done your research, love. Do your research. Please, you news people, do your research. That landfill, right, I'm going to pull it up. I'm going to see if I can pull it up again. All right, close that down. I shall close that now. I'll close that. No. No. Kentucky Landfill. Oh, <sighs> Oh, 
let's see what it says. Here we are. Right? This is what I've got for Kentucky Landfill. Types of waste and landfill category. There are two types of waste. Construction and demolition debris, CDD, is material resulting from the construction, repair or demolition of structures or roads as well as trees and other vegetation from road maintenance, storm cleaning up and land clearing. This material must be non-hazardous and non-soluble. Typical ways considered CDD are brick, concrete and lumber. Solid waste is any non hazardous discarded material resulting from industrial, commercial, or household operations. It is defined by Kentucky. Special waste is specifically accepted from being solid waste. Special waste is defined by whatever as being a waste of high volume and hazardous designated to be special waste by the energy environment. The waste streams most commonly handled is disposed of at a waste facility. Permitted by the solid waste branch are sludge from water or water waste water treatment plants and utility waste. Right? So, it says it there. It says it there. So please, news reporters, please, it's your job. Do the research. Get your facts straight. That's why, like, I live in the UK and I do not believe anything in my newspapers. I don't. Because they're there and they just sens sensationalise everything. Man killed by dog. Right? Yeah, the man wasn't killed by a dog. The man was killed by someone with a dog. You know what I mean? Or something like that. They sensationalise it. They highlight it to bringing a certain breed of a dog. And it isn't that breed of dog. It's another breed of dog. Or, let's think, sensationalise something. You know how they do? They, they wear the word things. And you think, oh, and that's what I hate with YouTubers who do it for click fact. And I don't like that. That's why mine are like, let's talk Sebastian Wayne Drake Rogers. And the searches. Because that's what we're talking about. Sebastian Wayne Drake Rogers and the searches. I'm not throwing anything else in there to sensationalise it. You either come and watch it, or you don't come and watch it. Simple as that. Right? I'm here to tell the, the facts. The facts as I find them. And I'll do my research if I have to. And I'm trying to figure out where the waste for a general household waste goes to. Somewhere in Galaxy. Or somewhere like that. Yeah, I will find that. But apparently, oh, going back to the PIs, apparently the PIs have requested they get all the information or something like that of the searches that was done around the home, outside the house and everything. Because then they can get that information and give it to uh, Seth. Because law enforcement aren't telling Seth anything. And I don't, I don't blame Seth for doing what he's doing. He's annoyed. He's angry. He wants to know where his son is. And he's getting no answers. He's getting no help, no support from law enforcement or TBI. Nothing. Right? Now, I just want to look at this again. Um, 
construction, demolition, debris, contained landfill. The general public is most familiar with contained landfill. A landfill is permitted by the solid waste branch is a site of just full disposal of solid or special waste that must be designed and operate to specific criteria. Landfills often include specific areas for salt wasting, containing leachate, 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 leachate and mounting grade water. There are several kinds of landfills based on the waste streams disposed there. 1. Contained landfill. The general public is most familiar with this type of landfill. This category of solid waste site or facility is designed to accept all non hazardous solid waste, including household, commercial, and industrial waste. This waste may include graded tyres, household hazardous waste, limited quality generator hazardous waste. Right? So, what they say, like, you know, if you've got a mattress or something that needs to get rid of, that is where that waste goes to. Right? It's it's still there. So when they say, "Oh, they say to Kentucky," look, 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 it's here. It's all there. It's all here. Construction, demolition, special waste landfill. You know what I mean? Now, when I find out where the other site is, I'll pull up the information on that. But it's really hard for me to find this information out sometimes because there's some links I've been sent on Messenger and I've clicked on it and it won't let me open it. It'll open it so you're not in the designated area to open this. You know what I mean? Because I'm out in the USA, I cannot open that link. So I have to get people to open the link and then screenshot it and send me the information. <laughs> and it's like this, and there's a lot of sites I click on. I like this. This was very helpful. Well, there's one or two I clicked on a link and it wouldn't, wouldn't let me go there. Wouldn't let me. I'm seriously thinking of getting a, what's that one, the PVA? Or something like that where you could say you're in the USA. Your IP, put your IP address as in the USA. Or something like that. I'm not sure. How do they make a difference? You're okay. You're okay. I'm just talking about news reporters getting their facts straight. Because it's so annoying. When you keep hearing them say, well, they searched Kentucky landfill because the garbage men said that their bins that day felt a little bit heavier. And it's got it there. It's got it all there. And I'm sorry, theirs isn't taken to there. It's taken to another subdivision somewhere in Gallatin or something like that, I believe. I don't know. I'm going to have to search it up more. Then I can get 10, 15, 30 minutes to do so. I will do so. But it takes me hours to wake up in the morning because of my medication. I'm just... When my son says, oh, I'll pick you up. In... Don't bother picking me up in the morning. I'll come over in the afternoon. I'm more awake then. Because that's when I start waking up properly. About one o'clock ish, five, one o'clock. And by then, I'm thinking, oh my God, I've got to do my housework, I've got to do this, I've got to do that, I've got to go to shops. And then I've got to try and find all this information out. There isn't enough time in the day for me, the real reason. So, but thank you for being here anyway. Eh, uh, well, let's think what else was there. 
you know, don't need that anymore. So some, um, oh yes. Now this is by Lauren Conley. I have got the link in the description. I like her. And she's got this podcast called The Outlier Podcast. Right? And she was talking to Doug, the bounty hunter, about his new book. Right? And it was nearly about 19 minutes in. So hold on. I'm Sorry about that. That's the uh, Mr. Fucking Skipper. Go get up close to nature. Go uncover a hidden waterfall. Sorry about this. Under the stars. Go get inspired at scotrail.co.uk. Scotrail, your ticket goes further than you think. Tired of ads interrupting your gripping investigations? Good yes. news. Ad-free listening is available on Amazon Music for all the music plus top podcasts, included with your Prime membership. Ads shouldn't be the scariest thing about true crime. Start listening by downloading the Amazon Music app for free or go to amazon.co.uk slash true crime ad free. That's amazon.co. Hold on. I've got Amazon Prime. I'm going to have to check that out. .uk slash true crime ad free to catch up on the latest episodes without the ads. Right. I sometimes feel that God does that to us or for us for a reason. Two, I'm just staying up to where it's going. My daughter is doing because I believe uh, and anything anymore. You know, has been covering it. It's been it's against them and move right. on. Wow. Right. This is where it starts talking about Sebastian. Now, Doc the Bounty Hunter, up until now, had done no research whatsoever into this case. None. And she mentioned this case to him. Just listen to what he has to say. Yeah, I wanted to bring to your attention. It's been driving me crazy. I've been covering this case. Uh, Nancy Grace has been covering it. It's been on the national news for, for a little over a month, but there is an autistic boy missing out of Tennessee, 15 years old, hasn't taken his medication. And it's very odd, dog. I mean, they have searched thousands of miles they've had drones they've searched waterways they uh, it's it's insane i mean there's there's volunteers no trace of him on camera allegedly no dogs have picked up his scent what gives uh well i can only say by the years of investigating same thing usually a family member has done something mm -hmm. you know usually there is a a uh, dump ground, your trash dump ground nearby, or a lake. Lie detector tests don't work. Well, they do use them. They don't work on certain individuals. I think the parents, anybody close to him, take a lie box. If they volunteer, okay, I'll take it. Then, you know, they take it, they pass. Well, it doesn't, it doesn't matter anyway. Yeah, uh-huh. So Wait. where you start with, the, with autistic kids is the family members. Because it's hard to raise an autistic kid. It yeah. is hard, quadruple hard, than a kid that is not autistic. So start with the family. And yeah. Nancy Grace, uh, yeah. I never met her, but she used to speak at the bail bonds convention for us. And that happened to be that day I was uh, sick. But she's a very good investigator. So she usually comes up with stuff, you know. But I would say there's a family member or even a neighbor that is just, you know, and they'll, they'll, how young is the boy? He's 15. Yeah. So without leaving a site, that means somebody, 
you know, dumped him somewhere or, and it's very sad. There's a show on A&E called 48 Hours. Yeah. And after 48 hours, 90% of people missing, age, gender, and all that have been, uh, well, have been killed. So it, when you find nothing and, you know, like uh, dogs can't, get, don't get a scent, mm-hmm. bloodhounds and all that, every single time the person is passed away or they've been killed and disposed of. I, sorry, I, I kept on trying to interrupt you because I actually could not believe that you don't know this case and you stated all of that. I mean, if you have time, oh, right. everything you just said is what has made this case so contentious. The stepdad and right. the mom are being looked at because they did not speak out on the news asking people for help with their child for about seven days. The stepdad appears to to have some odd language. They actually left for a while, the second or third week of the search. And then as far as the lie detector test goes, mom already took a polygraph. Allegedly, and I was on the Nancy Grace episode, I was on the panel when she asked stepdad to take it. He challenges her with this this, uh, phrase and says, name the time and the place. And then all of a sudden, the TBI, or per him, the TBI says, oh, you're not allowed to take it. Well, what? This doesn't make sense. And then well, it, it's such a mess. Me I cannot believe you said that. <laughs> let me tell you, you can Google this to find it out. You know, okay. Google is sometimes everyone's worst enemy. If you take a Valium, yeah. one, one t- blue Valium, mm-hmm. if you drink a certain downer, you can pass any lie detector test because it slows your heart down a little bit. Yep, beta blockers, so, benzos. Oh, it, trust me, we discussed yeah, this. Yeah. Discuss this. Yes, yes. And you said the the landfill or the dump site. Oh, they already checked yeah. a Kentucky landfill because that's where the the trash goes in Tennessee. And according to one of the guys that dumps the trash or something, he he felt something, and that's what indicated or or, or was an indication that maybe they should go look there. So they did, and they didn't find anything. And that's why I got chills. I'm like. God, you're good. Like you literally didn't even know this case after this or when you're done your interviews, you should look up Sebastian Rogers. You're going to be like, holy crap. Okay. That was. It was only very short. Right. But. From what she said, he'd done no research on that case. He was going on his own institution, whatever, intuition. From what he's, from cases he's being involved with, right? Now, he mentioned the landfill. She mentioned Kentucky. Hmm. What about the other landfill? That needs to be checked. There's another landfill. Please, law enforcement, anyone who can get that out to law enforcement, tell them there's another landfill. Have they checked it? I don't think they have. Right? And it's true. If you're not going to get rid of a body, it's going to be in a river or in a landfill. Right? Unless they bury him. And as someone said the other day, are they close to a church? I pointed that out last night. I said, yes, they, and I said, they are close to a church. Now, have they inquired, was there any funerals, burials planned for that day, for the Monday? Because if that was the case, the grave would have been dug on the Sunday, yep, ready for the Monday. They could have placed Sebastian into that hot, into that grave, covered his body with so much dirt. You wouldn't notice an inch or so of dirt just to cover a body, right? As long as the body is covered, they're not going to notice. Oh, that's took another inch up. You've got to dig it up again. They're just going to put the box, the coffin in the hole and then 
fill it up with the soil. So has that been checked? I know it wouldn't be nice if there was a funeral on that day for someone to say, for the law enforcement to say, look, I'm really sorry, but your whoever, father, mother, husband, whoever, I know you buried them on the Monday, but we really need to have a look under the coffin. We don't want to open the coffin, we want to have a look in the in the hole itself, underneath the coffin. Because that's a possibility. And because the dog's maybe not hit on that scent around there, because it's down a flipping hole. It's been carried there and put in there. Right? There's not going to be a scent of him. But anyway. But what Dog said is eerily. Oh, then she was getting spines when he said that. Lakes and landfills. So, unless he was handed over to someone other than CP, don't know who, but someone, and they had the time to dig a hole and bury him before the police got there Monday morning at about 6, the 6.40, 6 6.45, right? Then I think you've got to, they've got to check that other landfill out. I don't care what anyone says, they need to check it out. Because they've got records of where rubbish was from at what time what day of the month every day. They know where every day where certain rubbish was for this certain area was dumped. It's not just, oh, well, we'll just dump it all here. They know exactly where that rubbish was dumped. So for the law enforcement to say, oh, it's because the garbage men said the bin felt a little bit heavier than usual. And that's why they went to Kentucky. Get your facts straight. You can't. People noticed straight away. They said Kentucky is not the landfill for general household waste. They say thing it is where construction sites take. Oh god, I hate that when it happens. Right? It's where construction sites take this So, let's have a look at that. Let's click on waste. Is it open up for me? No, nothing's going to open up now. No. <coughs> <coughs> Yeah. Right. So I think they need to go and do that check. I'm going to when I come off here. I'm and I've uploaded this and everything and doing everything I need to. I'm going to um dig a bit because tomorrow I've got a bit of a busy day. So I'll do it now while I'm up and awake. Right. And um, my cats have calmed down now, so I should be able to get on a bit better. Um, I'm going to look into 
they had some white landfill for that area and do some map time screenshot it all for you and mark it out totally if i can if i can i'm not that good with computers at the moment but i'll try my best right and i don't think there's no way i'm sorry i'm not even going to contemplate it i'm not going to say he did not walk out that house i'm not going to say i was going to say i don't think he walked out that house i'm not going to say that no more he did not walk out of that house he was either put in the bin right and then took down to the side of the road now seth said himself people are going on about this camera footage and how they see sebastian coming down no seth has said it's too dark the lights weren't working above the garage because if there was, he would have seen it was Sebastian walking back into the garage. So the lights weren't working that night. He couldn't tell who it was. All he saw was a little flashlight. Now, anyone can use a little flashlight. I know if I'm going out in the dark and I've got to take, and I had to be to take down a driveway. I'd have a flashlight if it was pitch black. Because you know me, I'll tip over a flipping stone, a little stone on the driveway. Right? So, he, could, he said it could have been anyone. There's no possible ID of Sebastian. So, there's no ID of him coming home. There's no proof that he came home that night. Someone mentioned in one comment on the page, Perhaps he went to the bowling alley, like he said, left the bowling alley in his bowling shoes, then went for their lunch, their dinner, and it was after the dinner, he said he still got the note to say he had the bowling shoes on. Then, out of anger, she wouldn't be happy. I wouldn't be happy if I had to go back somewhere. Right? I'd just want to get home after having my dinner. Right? So... Could she have gone back, handed those shoes in, but then they was unable to find his shoes. And then, Matt, so she's made him walk out with no shoes on. But I don't see, they'd have uh, him on camera. They'd have him on camera coming back into the bowling alley. They would have him on camera. So we don't know what law enforcement have got because they're not telling us anything and they don't have to. Right? And that is what's annoying me when people are coming out with this GP hype uh coming coming out with these stupid ideas. Right? And as I said, if I've got nothing else to talk about, about Sebastian, if there's nothing new, then I'll just go back to the beginning of the case, which is the 26th of February. And we discuss that again. Right? So I've got nothing new to say. I won't make up a story. I'll just go back to the beginning. Right. Um. No. Mm -hmm. What else was there? Oh God's sake! It keeps doing that to me. I don't know why it does that. I don't think there's anything else I picked up. I'm just going to go and check them. Ah, uh, these sites. Right. Right. 
Now tomorrow night, you know, is it tonight? I'm not sure when it is. It's probably be tonight. I'm going to, actually, I will check that now. Um, I'm going to check that now, because it's 10 o'clock, it might be on, all right, let's have a look. All right, let's have a look. Oh. Um, not selling anything. Let's have a look. Uh, yeah, something, yeah, uh, nothing yet on a uh, podcast. Um, that is today. God, this thing again. Today is when Nancy Grace does a video, and the information comes out. Yeah. Right. No. I'm gonna just get rid of that. I don't want to get rid of Sebastian, but. Just so that I can put this up his game. See that? New info. Sebastian Rogers, what the neighbor witness. And this woman has said it completely. Right? Sebastian isn't a dollar sign. He's a missing lead. I think she meant to say kid. And the clickbait links are too much. New info. As soon as I read that, I said, Sebastian Rogers, but yeah, I knew what the information was, and I thought, that isn't new info. It's about what the uh, neighbour saw one day when he came in with his mum, and he's jumped out the car to get the post out the post box, and he skipped towards the front door, and then realised he'd come back round and went round to the garage door. So many YouTubers trying to make a profit from this beautiful boy missing. It's really terrible. They do this. They get paid when you watch the channels. They have. Please don't visit them. Well, I don't get paid. I don't get paid. I don't get paid. Right? I do not get paid for anything. Ah. Uh, clooming at it. Hmm. Yeah. What's this one? Uh, Henderson Field, Tennessee, the private thing has hired private investigators to assist in the search. Well, I don't blame him. I really don't. Because if the law enforcement aren't going to tell him anything, they might tell the private investigators because they're looking into the case, aren't they?
right? But what is private investigators going to do for Seth? Spark no. <coughs> Let's not get the information that he's been asking for. You know what I mean? That's what they'll do. <coughs> so they've gone to law enforcement and said, look, we're now looking into this case for Seth Rogers. But we'd like to have some information on the searches that you first conducted the first week. So that we know what is going on. You know what I mean? They don't have to tell him. But if they don't, then it's, the PR is going to go, well, that's a bit sus. Why won't they tell us? So, but there's a lot of people going around their house. A lot of people. Um, some have said perhaps he took his own life. I don't believe that. <coughs> but, um, Oh, the juice ain't helping. You lose this coffee. I'm wondering, can Owen KT, KP done her right a polygraph? You noticed how after the first interview she did with the new people, she seemed a lot more calmer. She wasn't rocking back and forth and things like that. She just seemed, and on that one with Nancy Grace, she seemed zoned out. Could she have been on some sort of medication to calm her down? And if so, was she taking that medication when she did a lie detector? Right? Which would keep her calm. As Dog said, beat and um, what's her name said, beat the blockers and all that. They calm the heart. They, they, like, they calm the heart right down. So if you've got a, a big heartbeat pounding constantly, your doctor will put you on a beta blocker to slow your heart rate down. Just a little bit, just to get the rhythm back into normal rhythm right could they have took beta blockers or something like that beforehand there's all ways of getting around a lie detector test that's why they're not put into brought into court because they can't be trusted because anyone can pass if you know how to what to use anyone can pass now, Seth, he's on medication. <laughs> that literally knocked him out. So that was inconclusive. I'd have to say he's been being conclusive because he's on medication. And he should never have had that uh, polygraph took because of his medication. It should have been, sorry, you can't do the polygraph today. We'll have to wait a week or so until you come off the medication. Then we can do it. You know what I mean? But because they didn't say that to him, he's probably they're probably just going ahead and doing it and he's falling asleep because he's so relaxed. He's falling asleep. He was tired, he's not sleeping properly, he's not eating properly, he's in pain, he's on medication for his 
pain relief is on medic uh something to help him sleep because he said if he gets 20 minutes sleep a night that's it he said that before in one of the interviews phone interviews he's done when he just fall asleep he dreams of sebastian this guy cannot even go into that room where Sebastian used to sleep. Will sleep. He can't go in there. He won't pick up the cards, the magician cards, off the table. He won't clean up anything of Sebastian's. He can't do it because he wants Sebastian to know that when he comes home, his bedroom's there, his magician cards are there. This is your safe place. Right? He will not give in to the fact that something could have happened. I think he's getting there, but at the same time, no, he's got to stay positive. Because we don't know, we've heard the cases of autistic children going missing from one song end and then being found. We don't know. We don't know if they did just put him into hiding, thinking about oh, well, the police could just rape this day as they run away, and then who's ever hiding him can let him go. Probably someone he wouldn't know, and somewhere he wouldn't know, so that when they did let him go, he wouldn't be able to say who it was or where he was. Oh, look, it's turned to Told you he was a runaway. Told you he just walked out the house. But I can't see the reasoning behind that. I really can't. Right? And I can't see him doing anything planned to Sebastian. Because they know he was going to live with his dad when the summer term, when they broke up for the summer holidays. So he's only going to be there another month or so, a couple of months. He went missing in February, so February, March. Yeah. He's only going to be there another three months. So I can't see them potentially, oh, I will do this or whatever. I think if anything happened, it either happened in the car or it happened when they got back to the house. And before he put, the rubbish was put out. And I don't think it was, I think it was an accident. And people said, but why wouldn't I just say, look, we had, we had this argument, he had this meltdown. In. Because she says, if, if he gets, um, like, he's had a busy day Sunday. He got up, he had breakfast, he spoke to people on, chat right um i don't know video call he they went to, um, picked up a cousin they went to bj's they went to the bowling they went to had dinner that's a busy day for an autistic lad so many sounds so many smiles so many senses going off in his head right so he's probably had an overload and he's come back and she said if he has if he gets too stimulated he gets angry well someday i think he was very stimulated his brain was overstimulated and he's got angry and she's last day to him right but instead of just telling the police this they've hid it why because Steph was aiming to get his daughter. Now, by saying he just walked out the house, I don't know how that is going to get his daughter back. They've got a missing child from their house. So no way is any judge or any child service is going to hand him his daughter while they've got a missing child from that house. They're not going to do it. So either way, he wasn't going to get his child. 
So I think it wasn't planned. I don't think they have him hidden. Because I can't see the reasoning behind that. I think something happened on the Sunday night. It was very sim stimulating from everything he'd been doing that day. Right? And he's just going to like a meltdown sort of thing. And he's not having it. He's not having it. He's stomping his feet and ooh, screaming, shouting, you name it. It's anything like my grandson. He's probably throwing things and all that lot. Because if my grandson has a guy that is too much going on, when he gets home, it's, it's like sensory overload. He has that problem when we take him to the shops. I have to tell him, if I go into the city centre with my grandson and I've got to go to five shops or five places, Right? I have to tell him one place at a time. So then we go to that place, then I'll tell him the next place. Then we go to that place and so on. And then maybe the third place might be something to get something to eat. But if I say, oh right, now we're in time, we're going to go to Primark, we're going to go to New Look, we're going to go to McDonald's or Subway or whatever. And then we're going to go here and then we're going to Forget all those shops because you just mentioned, I've just mentioned food. No, it's not going to go to any of those shops. You're going to have to take it into the food first. He's had meltdowns where he's lying on the floor. He was in a, a store once, a sports shop. My, sis, my daughter was with her little boy, right? His mum and dad were at the bad, their little girl in their pushchair. They're off doing their thing in the shop. Alice is running around like a fireworks been let off up his backside. Zoom, he's gone. And I finally got hold of him and he's going, No, no, no. And this shop assistant looked at me and I'm going, Alice, come with me, please. No. And she's looking at me to say, You his parents. Are you related to him? And so I said, let's go and find Auntie Dee Dee. As soon as I said that, he came with me. But this woman ass assistant in the shop was giving me some really funny looks. And then we get to another part of the store and he has this meltdown on the floor. So I'm having to protect him from people getting going past him to go to the queue to go and get served. I'm thinking, oh God, where's his mum and dad here? Why aren't they sorting him, calming him down? You know what I mean? But we managed to get, we got him out of that store. But it was just sensory overload for him. The noise in there, the sounds in there, the amount of people in there. It was just too much. So if he's been to all these places in that day, and they're all busy places, I should imagine BJ's is a busy place, the bowling alley would be a busy place, and the steakhouse would be a busy place. And don't forget they went and got some snacks and whatever in. And picked up his cousin. And met his two aunts. It's so much going on that day. This child had sensory overload, and when he got back, he let rip. Katie, instead of just saying, go to your room and calm down, right? Or go in this room and just calm down. I think she's lashed out at him. She could have grabbed him. He could have knocked his head. Bump. Right on the spot where he can't be hit. I don't think what happened in, I think something happened in that house. I think he did get back that night, even though there's no proof. But I think something happened. Right? 
and that's what that three hour phone call was about. They was then working up their story to tell the police. And for Christ's sake, your child is missing, is not in his bedroom. Are you going to phone your husband just three and a half hours away? He can't do feck all. Or are you going to phone 911, the emergency people, to come and help you? Oh, yeah, let's think. Mm. Oh, she phones her husband, who's three and a half hours away. What's he going to do? I'd be, I don't care if I was in tears. They've heard it all before on these 911 calls. A mother's in tears. And they're trying to get the information out of the mother. They don't care. They, you know what I mean? They get there eventually. But while they're getting this information out, they're getting police referred to them. You know what I mean? You phone the police. You phone law. You don't phone the sheriff's office. I don't care. I really don't care about that. You phone the police, and then if need be, the police will transfer you to the sheriff's office. Simple as. You do not wait to phone your husband. I do all this first, and then only after I come off the phone from the law, from the police, from you know, phoning 911 and all that, would I then phone my husband, who's three and a half hours away, No way would I phone my husband first. And if he said to me, why didn't you phone me? I said, I'll tell him, I said, what are you going to do? What are you going to do to help get my son? Nothing. You're three and a half hours away. The police are here. The police can do the work. You can't. So... I think that three-hour phone call was a cover. I think that was to get their story straight. And I think this is more that was there when the police got there. Right? So she probably got there about one. Seven o'clock. Don't know what time the police got there. Ten to seven. Seven o'clock. I don't know. But she was there when the police were there. And... She was there to make sure Katie stuck to her story. I think CP. But then again, they'd have it on his log that he phoned her. But then he could say, well, I phoned my, sister, my mother so she could go round and support Katie. You know what I mean? Well, I'm, I'm three and a half hours away, so I'm phoning my mother, who's half an hour drive, 15 to 30 minutes away, to go over so she can be there and comfort Katie while I can't be. So that's his giveaway story for phoning his mum. So, where we go? Hi, Tracy. So it's just so many twists and turns, and I'm so fed up of hearing all these clickbait. Hating, right? Fed up of it because I don't know how many times I've clicked on them and then I thought, Oh my god, and I've clicked straight back out, especially if you're if it's to me, I've already heard this, right? I've already heard this, so I don't want to listen to it again. I will click straight back out. So it's just sad, heartbreaking that this this lad. Oh, I'm gonna put it up again. This lad. It's the only photo I've got of him on here. I'll have to get some more put up on here. This lad is missing. Where we don't know. We don't know what happened to him. We don't know where he went. But he wouldn't have got far with no shoes. I'll tell you that now. 
Yes, I used to walk barefoot all the time when I was a teenager. My mum was always shouting at me, put your shoes on. Okay, so I put my shoes on as I went, because I always took my shoes with me. I always carried my shoes or my trainers, whatever I was wearing. Right? And I go, okay, so I pop them on. And as soon as I got out of the road, those shoes, those flip flops, whatever I was wearing that day, came off my feet. And I would walk for hours all day long without shoes on. So, yeah, it probably could get quite a distance without shoes on. But, saying that, this is a lad who didn't like going outside without shoes on. I was used to walking bare, but my feet had toughened up to it, you know what I mean? Right? But, this is a lad, he wouldn't go, put the rubbish out without putting slippers on. So, he's not going to go all day without shoes. He's not going there. He's not. <coughs> <coughs> and that's what don't make sense. The fact that he walked out the house with no shoes. And the fact that every interview they've had, she's looked at him. KP has looked at CP for reassurance as to say, am I saying this right? Have I said that right? And you get that little nod off him. You know what I mean? Just watch those interviews of them. You will see it all. And that one that really gets me, that first one, that duper's delight. I'm just going to take some juice. Sorry about that. But in that first interview, right near the beginning, you see it. Duper's delight. I showed it you the other week. And then after my live, I've gone onto a Facebook page and I've seen someone post something about Duper's Delight. And thought, hmm, was she watching my live? You know what I mean? But I don't care because it got it out there that there was a, a Duper's Delight. She gave that little smile. She probably brought a tissue up by her eye. Or by a nose would hide that hide it. But no, Katie, I found it. I saw it. Took me a while, but I saw it. It can take me five to six in times of watching a video to see something. I think, oh my god, why did I not see that before? But it's like that interview that video of the lights i said if you go back to my live where i first talk about that i said it was coming from that house on the corner and because of the deep right there's a deep that goes all the way up to their house right they can walk along that bit of a deep right it would look like the camera's at a higher point because of them being in a dip. And I thought, it's got to be those cars. That light had to be from the cars and the boats and everything that was parked on their driveway. But then someone said to me, no, 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 it's at the back of their house. And those two lights, that, those other two lights that you see are um, security lights that are on. Right? And then you've got them two little flashy lights. But okay, fair enough. But that camera is very high, I'm thinking, to get that angle. Right? <laughs> and so I went with what was being said and I should have stuck to my gut 
She believes you're good. If you got your saying telling something, believe it. Believe what your gut is telling you. Because then it comes out where you've got the other part of the video and you see the cars on the driveway. I'm thinking, oh my God. But you don't see no garbage truck. You see cars that are parked on the driveway. But you don't see no garbage truck. You see the house lights, the security house lights on that one house. And because you walk, they're walking along the deep, the camera looks high because they're in a ditch. Number one is in a ditch. Number two, sorry, is in a ditch. And they're walking towards number two. Number one. So number two, when it comes round, is in that light deep. And that's why the camera looks like it's at a high angle. Because there's a dip. I should have stuck to my guns. I knew then. So why Seth is being told to tell us, tell him it was a garbage truck? I don't know because we've seen the video now. It's a, I'm going to try and find it. I did say last night I'll try and find it. And I just didn't get time today. So I will try and find it. And when I do, I will show it on here. And um, you'll see yourself. It's it's on that corner house. That house where I pointed out where the camera camera was. But what I don't understand is if that camera picked it, picked it up. Why didn't the house on the other corner pick them up? You know what I mean? Unless their cameras are angled a lot lower. So it didn't pick them up. It only picked up a certain area and then stopped. Because you can have your and cameras angled at different angles. Just so that it picks up your, your cars and nothing else. So perhaps that was it. That's probably why that house didn't have any video recordings of them. So we don't know. We don't know what law enforcement have got. But I hope to God, FBI telling Seth they've got to wait 60 days. People are pulling it out. It's BS. They don't have to wait 60 days. <coughs> They can come and take over a case. Well, we're stepping in now because this is not... Especially if the faithful have got a family member working at the sheriff's office. I don't care if she's on... <coughs> I don't care if she's just a typist. Or someone doing the filing or something like that. I don't care. She's, they've got a conflict of interest because they've got someone from CP's family working there. They should hand it over to TBI straight away or FBI. Because I think when KP and CP say... Oh, they're telling us every day. I don't think the law enforcement are telling them. I think the member of family who works at the sheriff's office is telling them. But I don't think it's law enforcement. What they're going to tell them every day? Oh, I've not got nothing new to tell you. Bye. Got nothing new, new to tell you. Bye. You know what I mean? Because that's what they keep telling us. We've got nothing new to tell you. You've got nothing because you're waiting for that one big tip to come in and break the case right open. Anyway, it's 20 past 10. Yeah. <coughs> yeah, I've got to, admit, I've got to take my, my medication. So... Anyway, I will look into finding the Ever Lang film. I will look into finding that video evidence of 
the rest of that video that was shown well it might be on someone else's youtube i think it is i'm going to have to check it out but until then i'd just like to say i'm going to take this off take this off thank you for being here with me and and i'll be back tomorrow at eight o'clock as usual so i'll see you then good night